do you have a dream do you have a vision do you have something that God has put in your heart that's the something we're gonna put our eyes on say my dream will come to pass say my future is my friend say my future is my friend say I am mingling with my future I'm touching my increase and as you do that there's a there's a power by the Holy Ghost that is released towards you to accomplish that I'm setting my heart and my dreams. I'm setting my heart and my goals. I'm setting my heart and my vision. See things turn around from where you are right now. See you achieving your goals, refusing to allow the circumstances to dictate your happiness. Can I have a turn about the book of Leviticus, chapter 27? Is offering time. Often time I live in faith is blessing time. Amen. I say often time I live in faith is blessing time. It's not time to cry. It's, not to, it's blessing time. The Bible says more blessed to what? Give. To give than to receive. It's more blessed to give than to receive. I said it's more blessed to what? To give than to receive. Hallelujah. Levit Leviticus chapter 27. And we're going to read from verse 30. He said, all the tithe of the land. Say, all what? The tithe. It didn't say some. It said all the tithe. Whether the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree is who? Come on, talk to me. It's who? It didn't say it's yours. He it it says the Lord's. I want to make sure you did, did say that. It didn't say it's yours. It didn't say it's your neighbor's. It says the Lord's. And it is what? It is holy. Unto the Lord. It is holy. There are some things that the Bible considers holy. One, the Bible talks about the, the anointing, the holy anointing is holy. The blood of Christ is holy. Amen. The body of Christ, which is a very, very big one, the Bible says is holy. Not because of us, but because of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank God. But Bible says, also said that your seed, your, your tithe is also holy. He says it's from the Lord. And when you, when you present it back to him, something happened in the realm of the spirit. There's a transaction take place. Your tithe can protect you. Hallelujah. Your tithe can fight for you. Say, my tithe can fight for me. The Bible says it's holy as unto the Lord. So, so whenever, whenever you receive um, of, your, of your substance, remember that put something aside for the Lord because the Bible says it is, it is holy unto the Lord. Hallelujah. All through the Bible, we see great men and women of God who practice tithing. We, we know there are some people in the New Testament today that tells us, even some pastors preach that, that tithing is not for today. Well, I'm sorry, it's in the Bible. If it's in the Bible, God meant it to be, to be practiced. What do you think anyway? I don't think there's a difference between the Old Testament. You can't just go into the Bible and take one verse out and, and just remove it. The Bible is the Bible. If you can remove tithe from the Bible, you have to remove all the other promises from the Bible. Amen. Now you could smile at me this morning. Praise God. I said, Praise God. Genesis 26, verse 14, verse 13. The Bible says, Then Isaac sowed, Isaac sowed, he gave his seed into the land, and he reaped, and the same year, a hundredfold. So that's my portion. So that's my portion. Then Isaac sowed in the land before there was a famine. Things wasn't going good. Everyone is leaving. God give Isaac instruction. It's Isaac, don't leave. You see, your blessing is in a place of assignment. Wherever God assign you, that's where your blessing will flow from. We see God assigned Elijah to the brook and the blessing came there. 
water came. In the middle of shortness of water, water came because Elijah was in a place of assignment. The Bible says even God sent raven, come on, to bring food for Elijah. Okay, he was in a place of assignment. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So, so God told Isaac, Isaac, don't go. Don't follow the ways of the world. Stick with me. Stick with biblical instruction. Stick with the word of God. And he did. And the Bible says Isaac sowed in that land. And, and the Bible says he received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. The Lord blessed him because he followed divine instruction. Hallelujah. So this morning, I want to give an opportunity to bring your tithe and your love gifts to the Lord. Information is on the screen. You're at home. All my, our church in Vernon, all our friends and family around the world. Instructions on the screen of how you can give and contribute to the vision of God. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your beauty. We thank you for your people. And the vision you've given us as a church in this city to be a light for you. We bless all the givers, those online who will give generously. Let the grace come upon them today in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Well, we see the offering, those in the house here and at home, you can actually contribute online. Praise God. Oh, precious Jesus. We worship you, we worship you. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, we worship you. Before your throne. Precious Jesus, you deserve the glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, let's turn the Bibles to the book of Isaiah 45. We're still teaching on our theme this year. Is over here of uncommon treasures. Uncommon treasures. God says over here of uncommon treasures. And we are going throughout the word, looking for uncommon goodies, believing that it, they are belong to us, <laughs> claiming them by faith, standing until they manifest, whether it's over health, family restoration, we're trusting God. We're trusting God. Isaiah 45, verse 2, God promised this, this word. It's, I will go before thee and make the crooked place straight. I break in pieces the gates of brass 
and cut in sunder the balls of iron. I will give thee the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of the secret places that thou mayest know that I'm the Lord, which call thee by name, I'm the God of Israel. God is giving a solemn declaration over a, a, a king, a heathen king, by the name of Cyrus. Cyrus wasn't born again. The first time when I, I, I came across the scripture in Bible school, I thought he was talking to King David. That makes sense. My anointed King David, or Solomon. But let's, let's go back and show you here. He's talking, about, he's talking about a hidden king. So I figure if God make this solemn declaration over a hidden king, what about us that are born again? What about the, the us who are blood bought, have his nature, have his life flowing through us? If he can protect this man, what about the church? What about your family? What about your children? He will do the same thing to you, but you have to believe him. I say you have to believe him. Hallelujah. He said right here in verse 1, thus, un, thus says the Lord unto his anointed Cyrus. His anointed Cyrus. Whose right hand I've holded to subdue nations before him. I will loose the loins of kings, open before him the two leaf gates, and the gates shall not be shut. It's a promise to a heathen king. He wasn't born again. In verse 4, he said, For Jacob. My servant's sake, and for Israel, my elect, I have called thee by name. God says, Cyrus, I'm, I'm calling you, I'm ordaining you, I'm anointing you for Israel's sake. I believe God already, already raised a people in this city here, in this region here, in this nation here, for your sake. To bless you, to make a way where it seems to be no way. God already empowered people to serve you, my God. And He just wants you to be in the right place at the right time. He already anointed people, He already set people in the right place. And all we have to do is, is, is walk with Him. And be in sync with him. And learn to discern his ways. Because God's ways is not the way of the world. If, we, you, if you and I get caught up in the way of the world, the, the, the media craziness, it's impossible to discern what God is saying. Because you will speak from your emotions. And you, could, you will not speak for God. You would just believe this politician is a good politician can come and kiss your child. But what God is saying about our time, that's why this topic today and discernment is so important. We need discernment. We cannot trust our own instinct. We cannot trust our own intelligence. We need to hear from God. Yes, we need to hear what God is saying about the, issue, about the situation. Because sometimes things may appear to be good for a season. Yes, right. But you need God's mind on the matter. Or else we can be thinking God is speaking and God is not speaking at all. So this dear woman, Rebecca, let's go again now to little Genesis. Let me find the right scripture here. Is up, thank you. Genesis. I'm not going to go into all this again. I've, I've taught it before. And they blessed Rebecca and said unto her, thou art our sister. 
beat out the mother of thousands of millions and let thy seed possess the gates of those which hate them. She had a prophecy over her. The next chapter we discover she's barren. Interesting. That goes with a theology. Well, if God promised you would happen, that's not true. You have to fight for what God promised you. Not because God promises something and mean that you're going to just drop out of heaven. There are forces here that, that determine you will not rise. There are political systems that Satan already set up that say you will not rise. But who cares what they say anyway? If God be for me, who can be against me? If God be for you and your family, who can be against you? But you need to be aware of that so, so you, can, you can have your fight on. You can be ready to fight. So she had this prophecy that she would give birth to millions. 25. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was what? She was barren. Wow. And they were barren there. I said before, there are four Hebrew word for barren. This word here means that her, her female organs was completely damaged. Yet God still prophesied, my God, that from that, from those ovaries, from your womb, millions will come. Knowing that she was barren. But if God said something and you believe it, it will materialize. God is looking for a church who can believe what he said about you and your family. God is looking for believers in this day. In this hour, who can say, let God be true. While you're in pain, while there's no money in the bank, tears may be flowing, but you keep singing the song of Zion. If God be true, let every man be a liar. Right there. Can you imagine the home? But I thought, I thought you get a prophecy. But now you're barren. Not only barren, you, you, your womb are damaged. But God give you a word. Like Jesus. They came to Jesus. Your friend Lazarus is sick. He said, ah, it's all right. This sickness will not lead to death. But Lazarus still died. But look at Jesus, the ancients of days. Nothing moved him. He came to Lazarus' tomb. He didn't, he didn't cry. He didn't say, oh, Father, what happened? I thought you said Lazarus wouldn't die. But in the middle of contrary evidence, our Lord Jesus set an example for the church. Mary came to him and said, if you were here three days ago, our brother wouldn't be dead. He said, Mary, I am. He said, but, 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 what have you asked God for? In the last days, in the resurrection, he will do a wait for you. Look at Jesus. He didn't move. He said, I am the resurrection. Amen. I am that day that would happen. I am that day. I'm the ancients of days. He said, show me where he is. And then he made a statement that shocked scholars. He said, Father, I know you always hear me. What do you mean I was here? The day when he said, this sickness will not lead to death. Come on. Yeah. 
He said, Father, I know you always hear me. I'm not going to change my words now because something looked different. I'm not going to change my word now because it's a new bill. I've been saying, my God shall supply all of my needs according to which is in glory. Now, I'm not going to change my words now because there's a new bill show up. Say, God is on my side. Come on, say, God is on my side. Things must change. I inject the Holy Ghost in my environment. I inject the Holy Ghost in stubborn situation. The Bible said, Jesus said, Show me where he is. Roll the stone away. At that time, he was the ancient of days. Where was the devil at that moment? Where is the Lazarus come from? All hell was at standard attention when he spoke to the dead carcass. And he was very careful. He said, Lazarus, come forth. If he had said, come forth, every dead would come forth. That's Jesus. I said, that's Jesus. And the Bible says he has given the church that same authority. Hallelujah. But we need to discern what he's doing. Or else we will just move by emotions. We move by emotions. What is happening? What what the media is saying? Oh, there's still COVID, and there are and new variants coming out. Ah, rah, 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 rah. Come on! I was listening to Dr. Fauci last night. In nineteen, no, nineteen. I think it was two thousand and one. He said, "This is what he's saying." They asked him this question. Is that the Valtry? We're in the flu season now. And I, I, my, my, I have a friend of mine have the flu for 14 days. Should that woman go and get the vaccine? He said, no. The best thing can happen to this woman is for her to have the flu. Because the flu is the best vaccine. I guess he forgot that video. But we have it. <laughs> Shout the devil is a liar. <laughs> Genesis chapter 2. No, no, let's finish here. Let's finish here. Genesis, Genesis. How this dear woman, prophetic woman, discerned what was happening. Isaac entreated the Lord and for his wife, and she was conceived, she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebecca was conceived. Amen? She became pregnant. Verse 22. Hallelujah. Read verse 22 for me. One, two, three, go. Uh huh. See, he, she's asking some question. She's asking some question. Lord, 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 something is wrong here. You, you promised me this job. I, I send a resume out, but something is blocking the flow. What is it, Lord? You see, when you ask the right questions, you receive the right answer. Yeah. She's asking some question. She inquired of the Lord. She started to talk to God about the matter. Lord, something is off here. We know you cannot lie. Something is wrong here. And then God gave her an insight. Keep going. Verse 23. Verse 24. One, two, read from me. One, two, three, go. And the Lord said unto her, Uh huh. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Come on. <laughs> the elder shall serve the younger. Which means Esau shall serve Jacob. She had that word. She able to download that revelation from God in her spirit. So you know what happened? That's why there was no need for her to trick her husband. You know the story? She tried to put stuff on Jacob, for on Jacob to deceive her husband. You see, when God gives you a word, you don't need to lie about nothing. Just stay in faith. Come on. The word is going to work itself out. But this woman had the ability to discern. To discern what is happening. And she did that. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. And God is calling us in these last days. To discern. To discern our inheritance. And with a discernment. Discernment is, is information. That is supernaturally revealed from God. Information that is supernaturally revealed from God to the believer. Said to the believer. <laughs> Not to the psychic people. To the believer. It is designed to protect us. To prosper us. And to give us facts that would not be, would be humanly impossible for us to know otherwise. God reveal it to your spirit. And when he does, there's a certainty. There's a confidence. Even though it seems like hell is still breaking loose in the natural, but things are already being perfected in the invisible realm, and any moment it will invade the natural. My God. Sometimes while you're walking by faith, things in the natural still look bad, still look terrible. But if you keep walking by faith, the, the internal realm is going to invade the natural and change it. Like the woman with the issue of blood, she heard of Jesus. Faith, come, faith came to her heart, but she was still bleeding. She was still weak. But the Bible says she pressed to the crowd. She was still bleeding. She was still weak. The natural has not changed as yet. But the Bible says she touched the garment of Jesus. And virtue left Jesus. Amen. What happened here? The eternal, the intangible, come on, of the anointing become tangible and change what was tangible in her body. And she was completely healed. But she discerned. If I can touch the border of his garment. Other people were touching Jesus. But nothing was happening to them. But this woman. Who had the ability to discern. This man is not just some preacher. This man has the answer. This man is my solution. And she pressed to the crowd. And she received what rightfully belonged to her. And in these last days, I don't know about you, but I need the discernment to go stronger in my life. So I can discern what belongs to me. I could discern what belongs to my family. Because we're, in, we're living in evil days, in evil times. I need God. Don't know about you, but I need God in my life. I need God. Without God, I fall flat on my face. But with him, I'm dangerous. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands up to heaven right now. Just pull on that discernment right now. That insight, that ability right now, that grace right now, that grace right now, that grace to that grace to receive the ability to receive what God is saying. Those insight, those prophetic words, and the grace to execute them 
and see them manifest. Hallelujah. I will listen to a testimony from this great man of God I love so much. He said that, and this can work for anybody, but God's word is God's word. He said that he asked the Lord for $70,000. That's what he needed to take care of some things because he was planning the crusade in New York. He need $70,000 to come in. Well, he went into a tutorial service and only $5,000 came in. He went to God. He said, God, there's a problem. I ask you for $75,000, but only $5,000 comes in. God says, son, stand still. Stand still. Stand still. Don't move. Stand still. Say, I'm standing still. Say, I'm not moving. Say, I'm not moving. Say, I'm putting pressure on the pressure. Say, I'm not moving. I will put pressure on the pressure because I am not moving. He said, but three days later, a man called him. They haven't talked to him in years. He said, I, I, I saw the come to the meetings. I missed the meetings. Where are you going to be? He gave him the address. He said, by the way, just in case I missed the offering, I have a check for you for $70,000. I said, well, yeah, because a preacher. <laughs> no, because he trusts God. Because he trusts God. Hallelujah. We need discernment. This is information that is supernaturally revealed from God. It comes to your belly, come to your spirit, to the believer. It is designed to protect us. To prosper us. To give us facts. Facts. They give us instruction. On what to do. How to communicate. That will be humanly impossible. For us to know. Otherwise. Let's go quickly again. To Matthew chapter 13. Whoo, glory be to God. Are you getting something here? I'm getting blessed by this word, man. I'm getting blessed. Matthew chapter 13. Verse 10. Verse 10 said, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Why are you speaking to them in this strange language? Hmm. Verse, verse 11. And he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but not unto them is not given. It's given unto you to know, to have insight and difficult matters. Things that people are scratching their head about, you just have Insight, they call it mysteries. Oh, hallelujah. 
and mysteries of supernatural knowledge that even the most educated people on the planet cannot know without God. He said, I'm giving you, I'm, I, I spoke to them in parables, but to you, because it's been, it has been given to you to know the mysteries, secret answers, secret insight about difficult matters. It can be your, your family, but your children. Why is Johnny behaving like this? Why is we, my husband and I keep having the same problem over and over again? Our marriage seems to be bloomed to a certain time and then we always hit this, 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 this rock, this hard place. And we cannot bloom, we cannot grow beyond this. What we need now is insight. God want to give you insight. For example, man is different from woman. I hope you're aware of that. I know there's some people in the United States can't tell the difference. But man is different from a woman. But we're different. Man needs sometimes, most of the time, need to go into a cave. Not because something wrong with us. We just like to figure things out in the cave. And the worst thing we want is for you to follow us there. <laughs> Don't follow us. I'm going to the cave. I want to come with your baby. No, no, baby. I got to figure this thing out myself. I got to work it out. Oh, but I know the answer. No, that, that's good for you, but I need to know the answer. <laughs> well, the worst thing can happen to marriage if the wife is the one always have the answer. Amen. Take it from me. The man need to hear from God. I'm leaving, man. I'm leaving. The man need to hear from God himself. He's built differently. So that's why you need to pray. He said, but he's taking too long. Leave him alone. Let, 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 let him walk the thing out with God. Maybe, maybe, you see, you see, history, history told us that women, most, most of the time, gotten saved before the man. Most women who, in the family, got saved first. So sometimes you're a little more advanced spiritually. Don't tell us that, though. <laughs> One time a, late, a, guy, uh, um, a man called me in a burning church. He said, Pastor, you know I love you, you know. Well, I know you love me. He said, but is it possible that your wife, that, that my wife, can stop playing your messages in my house. Because I love you, Pastor. But I, <laughs> so I call, I said, listen to me, turn it down. You know, turn it down. Don't, don't blast Pastor all through the house. A man needs to go into the cave. Women. My wife, for example, my, uh, my wife is a, is a blessing. Sometimes I said, dear Jesus, she's not here so I can talk about her. <laughs> lock the door. Pastor, man, lock the door. Pastor, 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 lock that door. <laughs> I don't get my wife sometimes. 
because of the mall. And she's having this deep conversation to this person, to this woman. So I assume maybe they walk together. And they're talking, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I'm like, what the heck is this, man? So, so when she first said, baby, so how long is this lady? I met her for the first time. Ah, you met her for the first time. And you have that connection. Women have ways of connecting so quickly. Us men are different. We need to go into the cave and calm ourselves down. It might take a couple of days, three days, sometimes six months. (laughs) But we're going to get it. But while we're in the cave, the worst thing we want to hear from you is to tell us, when are you going to get this thing? No, no, no. Another thing. Ladies, hear this. Hear this. Hear this. There's a man I've been listening to lately. I like him. I'm not going to mention his name. But he preached to men. He's been empowering me lately. I'm going to have him here. Some videos to bring the man together. And all I'm saying here is that, but hear this, hear this, hear this. If you're married, hear this. Hear this. Take it from me. The worst thing a man wants is when his wife finishes statement. That will shut a man down. Where he feel now, I have nothing to offer. Thank you. Where he feel like, I have nothing to offer. Because men, when they are in the place of processing things, getting things together, nothing wrong with them at that point. You may have received the answer already. What you have to do now, start to pray. Lord, let him get it. Let him get it. Let him get it, Lord. But don't say, hey, I've been praying for you, boy. (laughs) I've been praying for you. I've been asking God to download. No, don't do that. Leave him alone. What will happen is this. Have counsel, lots of men. Who end up having sexual affairs. Listen to me. When a man feels like he has no voice, remember, a man is a prophet. The Bible said very clear. Now, this may go against Oprah, <laughs> go against what the world is saying, but the Bible is very clear on this principle. God put Adam in the garden. And God put Adam to sleep and pulled Eve out of him. Come on. Which means Adam was the one with the instruction. Adam's responsibility now was to transfer the instruction to Eve. That's what the Bible says. The Bible even tells us very clear. That when Eve partook partake of the fruit and gave it to her husband, both their eyes became open. Imply when he bite into the fruit, it's affect the whole home. So which means, see this whole now. Remember, no, don't send me no letters. That's what this whole nonsense been going on in the news. How can I say this? I don't see it anyway. Because it's wrong. There's a, there's a system today that's against the family. To destroy the family. 
to destroy the home. And they would do anything possible to remove the men from the home. Come on. Satan's strategy is to destroy the home. Guess what? If he destroyed the men, the girls have no example. And the son have no example. And the son will look for an example somewhere. And he might find an example in the wrong place. The girl may find the example. I hear me. I'm saying discernment, discernment. And, 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 and us, us. So I was, saying, I was saying this about men. A man, is, a man is a priest. A man is a prophet. A man needs to know that his, his, his home is his castle. A man needs to know that his home is a, is a place of rest. A man needs to know when he come home that, 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 that he's not being talked down to or put down. It's a good message. It's a good message here. A man need to know, a man need to know that when he come home, he's the king of the castle. That's what he's thinking. He may be wrong, but that's what he believes. What do you do? You support him. You empower him. You, you encourage him. To be that man. To be that leader. No letters. <laughs> if a man lose that voice, he will find someone that will listen to him. He will find someone Listen to him. Because somebody will listen to him. Satan's strategy is to, is to silent the man in the home. Silent the man in the society. And now a certain man say, well, I'm not a man anymore. I'm confused. Hallelujah. It's a good message. I don't know where I get up and stop it, but that's a good message. What was talking about, Pastor Brian? Huh? Mystery. Mystery. No, the, the, woman, the woman are empowered. Trust me. Women are empowered. I was raised by godly women. I was blessed some powerful woman in this house that can pray devil to our people's life. I know the woman in this church here. But I want the men, we, we, we're a little slow a little bit. But we just need, we just need your patience. We don't, get it, we don't get it immediately. Don't quit on us. Encourage us. Let us know that, let us know that we're important. Because a man needs to feel significant at home. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So, Jesus said to them, we give them to know the, the, the mystery. To discern. But for them it's not given. If we don't have discernment working in our life, it will be very difficult to unlock the promises of God. Because see, God is raising children, not robots. And each of us are a different place with him. So you may go to the scripture and find a scripture that may be work for Pastor Brian, but it may not work for you. Because the instruction to you, come on, might be different. God have different strategies of how to deal with different problems. 
But through relationship, through fellowshipping with him, he can tell exactly what to do, what to say, how to communicate. Hallelujah. Let's, let's go over now to, to uh, Matthew chapter 16. Matthew 16. I read this before, but, but hear it again. Hear it again. Because there's so much in this. Hallelujah. You know, ladies, you empower your husband. Keep empowering your husband. Let him know he's important to the family, to the community, to his work. Um, Matthew chapter 13, verse chapter 16, verse 13, and he said unto, and he said, and some says, are you there? Verse 13. And Jesus came into the course of Caesarea Philippi, and he's asked his disciples, whom do men say? <laughs> what are they saying about me out there? And then some respond, some said about John the Baptist. Some Elias or, or Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But knowing Jesus, he went to the heart. But whom say you? I know what they're saying about me, but what, what are you saying about me? And they were silent. They were silent. They were silent. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed art thou, Simon about Jonah. Here it is. For flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Human beings cannot give you revelation. Only the Spirit of God can give you revelation. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates, come on, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Which means the believer that have prophetic revelation the gates of hell will not prevail against that believer. You, you will take the revelation you receive and you put pressure on the pressure until the pressure decides to, to actually run away. It's words from God. God revealed to you. Come to your spirit about your business, about your children. And, and then a pressure comes... You say, no, I'm not moving. Why? I have something. I'm putting pressure on the pressure. My stand of faith is putting pressure on the pressure. And then what you do, you, you find a, a good support base called a local church. A company, a believer that can pray for you. That can stand with you. So you can win. What are some of the inheritors that God promises? I give them to you before. I give them to you again. Number one, God promises wisdom. Wisdom is seeing life from God's perspective. I'm seeing life from God's perspective. This particular pastor that taught me this was the pastor in, how can I say this here? Is this pastor right now that I was told to pray for? He taught this to me years ago. He said one time he came home. The, the wife brought the, the son home. And... Um, he looked at the baby. He looked at the baby. Say, say, say I'm listening. God, this is important here. I'm saying here, wisdom is you seeing life from God's perspective. I have God's eyes on the matter. I have God's ways in the matter. And if I keep looking through the lens of God, the natural must change. So, look at the child, 
little baby. And he keep having vision of this baby finishing high school. Well, this is strange. Having open vision of the child taking the diploma as a baby. He started praying about it. Keep happening over and over and over. He said, God, obviously, you're trying to show me something. Well, when the child become five years old, came to the room, Papa, it's pain in my chest. He's coughing up blood. Pain in my chest. Rushed him to the hospital. Doctor said his chest is full of tumors. He will die. But the man of God, I would have a vision. When talking. Of a child. The Bible, says, the Bible says, Lord, that God do nothing until He first reveal it to His servants, the prophets. Who are the prophets? You. You are the prophet of your own life. God will reveal things to you so you could stay strong. They stood their ground. Doctors said the tumor is all over the place. They can't operate. They stood their ground. They said, Doctor, do what you can do. We're going to stood our ground. And God put a miracle. And the young man today is still alive. What am I talking about? Wisdom. The Bible talks about the different type of wisdom. There's the wisdom of man. Wisdom of man. Wisdom of the world. Wisdom of Satan, but it's the wisdom of God that comes from above. It's peaceful. And if God it gives you lens to look through, and when you look through the lens of God, all you see is possibilities. All you see is increase. All you see is promotion. But if we take them off, you see problems. You see Jericho. You see hopelessness. But we keep looking through the lens of God. He said, Lord, I'm going to trust you in this darkest hour. I'm going to trust you. You might be crying with tears. You may take some medication. You may need to see a doctor still, but you trust in God. That's wisdom. Having his eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then number two, God promised you long life. God promised you long life. What is long life? <laughs> How long do you want to live? But he promised you long life. Hallelujah. Number three, God promised you protection. Protection. He promised to protect you. But realize something. When you, when you are in a place of assignment, it seems like things work much easier. If you're out there doing your own thing, God can still help you, but it seems like it worked much better when you're in the place where God assigned you. Hallelujah. Protection. Protection over your family, protection over your home, protection over your mind, all the attacks coming to you. Number four, God promised you provision. Provision. Say provision. provision. Yes. In other words, he can step in to help you. For example, right now my, my, my wife and I, and there's many people in this church, we we're trusting God for things. I just realized that um, you will never graduate from trusting God. I don't care how spiritual you are. You will always trust God. So you, you may as well give up. You always need to trust God. Provision. Hallelujah. But you need to discern. Oh God, what are you saying here? What are you saying? I have this need that my paycheck is a, my paycheck is an, is an embarrassment. This paycheck I have 
is not enough. But you are my El Shaddai. You are my way maker. Lord, reveal to me how you're going to do this. Or lead me in the place of provision. Come on, talk to me here. Number six is rulership. 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 God wants to rule. Not demons in charge of your life. Or the media. No. God wants you to be in charge. In charge of your own emotions. Not go up and down. Luke 10 verse 19. I'm closing here. Look at that. Look at that. I have three more hours to go. Luke, 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 Luke chapter 12 verse. Where did I tell you to go to? Thank you. 10, 19. Behold, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon some stuff and serpent and scorpion and over all what? All the powers of the enemy and nothing. Come on, shout nothing. nothing. Say nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing shall hurt you. That's rulership. I'm called to rule in this situation here. Another promise God has given us, we have to discern, is heaven. I'm going to heaven. What about you? I'm, I'm going first class. I'm, back of the, I'm going to the back of the plane, man. <laughs> first class all the way. Heaven. I have a mansion there. I have lions there. I have eagles that talk there. The animals talk in heaven. Really? Oh, read your Bible. I remember I was teaching class, class on the prophetic, and people always said to me, Oh, Pastor, I can't see vision. I can't see vision. I can't see vision. I want to talk to God about it. I said, God, how come your people keep saying I see visions all the time. And God said, tell my people this. If I could cause a donkey to see visions, they can see visions. <laughs> say, I can see vision. <laughs> yeah. So, so heaven, have a nice beach in heaven. No snow in my department in heaven. You keep all the snow in my side of heaven. Just, just beaches. I could walk on the beach. I could run on the beach. I could swim. All good. Lastly, we have his nature. We have his nature. Say, I have his nature. Say, I have his nature. Isaiah 54, verse 17. I'm closing. Isaiah 54, verse 17. We have his nature. We have his nature. Is the righteous nature. Is a divine nature. It's a no weapon. Glory be to God. Form against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. For this is the heritage of the servant of the Lord. For what? Their righteousness. Is of me, says the Lord. We have a righteous nature. That's why we could stand before God with a feeling of shame because we have Christ's nature. Oh, glory be to God. And we could be bold in prayer, not out of our own merit, but His grace, Amen. His nature that's inside of us. Now, we're going to switch. I'm going to have communion today. And as you take the communion, partake in the communion element. Release fresh faith for protection over your life, over your family, over your destiny. Those at home, get your, your grape juice, your cracker, your bread, or whatever you have. Release faith. 
The Bible says the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He break it. And he talked to his disciples. Let's stand on our feet right now. The pastor's going to come and stand here. We're going to have those at the back. Is he helping you? Those at the back are going to come and have the communion. Oh, Jesus. Lebrocosa. You're going to believe God for things to turn around this week in your life. We try to be as, as modern as possible with this communion elements. Just take your time and you know, be patient at, at the top. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. Glory, 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 glory. Father, we thank you for your grace, Whew. for your anointing that destroy every yoke. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Precious Jesus. said the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed he took bread he break it and wait for you we're still trying to figure that that thing up and wait for you he break it and said this represents my body which was broken for you Lord we thank you 2,000 years ago your body was beaten on our behalf, in our stead. And you will declare that its stripes on your back was for our healing. We believe for physical healing this morning. And we believe for physical healing of our city, of our land, of our country. In the name of Jesus. Healing, healing, healing. Let's take in faith right now. In Jesus' name. Ah, shake it, lay boss. Pastor Boy, you want to pray for the blood? Jesus, Jesus. Huh. In the same manner, Jesus took the cup. <laughs> he held the cup up to his disciples, to all of us in this place. He, we ate his body, and then he shared the cup of the new covenant mm, 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 mm. the yoke destroying blood 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. The cancer killing blood. Come on, come on, come on. The blood that removes, destroys, Rabbas. and tears down every shackle of the enemy. Shaka, Rabbas, every Shaka. foothold. Every bit of bondage. Today, as we take this blood, this cleansing blood of Jesus, knowing very well what he accomplished already, mm. We prostrate our mind to receive the blood afresh. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We prostrate our body to receive the cleansing blood afresh. So when we take this blood, this is a sacred moment. Come on, come on. We believe that the blood was spilt in full. That it was spilt in full. Not one more drop ah. had to fall. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That the sacrifice was paid in full. So we command everybody in this place to receive the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ. Bondages are broken. Mindsets are destroyed and are renewed. And we are healed and saved because of this blood. We thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. And we partake of it afresh today. In your name we pray. Let's take in faith now. Sing it for me, sing it for me, sing it for me.
no God like you. You're the Alpha and the Maker. You're the beginning and the end the same time. Ancients of days, Lily of the Valley. Pray for those who need prayer. And for those who watch the line, maybe you came late before the offering teaching. All information is on the screen of how you can give. We appreciate your support, your generous gifts. Thank you so much. And remember, we're back here again on Wednesday and, and Tuesday for prayer. Join us. You can pray for your family. Believe in God for awesome things for you. Praise God. The service is officially dismissed. If you need prayer for anything, just come to the front. I'm going to stand with you. I'm going to believe God with you. We're praying, church. If you need prayer for anything, just come quickly. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just come. <laughs> To purchase your complete copy of this life-changing message or other messages from Apostle Everton Weeks, visit our online store at mlmi.org. That's mlmi.org. Or by phone at 1-250-763-2993. Come join us live, Kelowna, BC, Canada, or any of our church locations. And remember, life without purpose is just an experience.